to ask dating Q and A. So I've had some great questions come in this week Just for any of you that are uh, tuning in for the first time. My name is Andrea Hill. I'm the founder and creator of the Dinner Party, where I host uh, weekly, monthly events to help connect people romantically over a fantastic meal. So if you're interested in any of those, you can go over to jointhedinnerparty.com to check out all the details, and I hope to see you at the table. Um, for the next half hour, um, you can send in your dating questions. You can do it live during the show at join the DP on Twitter by tweeting no. out at me. And then on uh, Facebook, you can join me at the dinner party dot or excuse me, Facebook.com, the dinner party Vancouver, and post your comments in the live link below. Um, this week, uh, last week we talked about Tinder, so if you missed out on that, make sure you go over to the YouTube channel and check out all the fun things that we discussed with some great actionable things that you can be doing to have better access, uh, success while you're on Tinder, um, and some funny stories in there as well. I had the lovely Jill Prescott join me from tangentpath.com. And she'll be popping in at some point this afternoon uh, to tell you about her event that she has coming on Saturday. Um, I, tonight, I'm going to be focusing on honesty in the world of dating, which would seem like just a natural thing to do, but so many people out there just aren't doing it. Um, and then I've had some great questions come in ahead of time, which you can do as well before every Thursday. You can e email me at info at jointhedinnerparty.com with your hard-hitting dating questions, and I'll answer them during uh, the half hour. So I'm going to have Jill pop in right now, and she's going to let you know a little bit about what she's got going on this week. Hello, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jill is a spiritual pragmatist and she has a wonderful website called tangentpath.com and I have been very blessed to be a member of her soul sister circle on numerous occasions and she has an intensive happening this Saturday the 6th in Vancouver and I'll let her know let her tell you a little bit about it and I believe she might have a spot or two left if you want to sneak in there last minute so yeah tell me all about it I actually have one spot left that's it that's it that's yeah exciting. I know <laughs> so I actually started the soul sister circles as an eight-week program in my home where five women and myself so if you live in Vancouver and you're interested in that starting up again soon too um, and the intention was to have women get together and support each other through um, meditation, through connection, we do car readings, and the one in my home, I feed everybody yes, every week. Yes, amazing. That's just worthwhile. <laughs> I like to cook. <laughs> so the one coming up on Saturday is an intensive. So we're going to spend from 9 in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening. You're fed, you're cared for, um, snacks, tea, water, all of that's provided. And we're going to go through some meditations and some processing in order to really um, tap into your deep heart's desire, to really open you up and understand what it is that your heart is really craving. So sometimes people word it as purpose or desires or whatever that is, but we're going to clear some old stuff out of the way and open up to new ideas and new possibilities. And also... Um, I think one of the most profound things that happen is that women really start to understand that there are women out there that want to support us, that want to have that connection, that really want to get behind each other and support our dreams and our wishes and our desires. And so there's a really beautiful community that gets built and a real knowing beyond maybe something you've ever experienced before about um, the connectedness of women. So that's coming up on Saturday. It's actually in New Westminster, but it's like a 10, 15 minute walk from the SkyTurn station yeah, in New West. Super easy to get to. Yeah, really easy to get to. Really great location. It's actually on the river. So we're going to do a little bit of outside work, and Saturday's mm -hmm. supposed to be fabulous. So it runs from when to when? Nine till six. Okay, on and Saturday. if someone wants to get um, enrolled last minute, how are they doing that? They need to email me. So my email address is tangent, jill at tangentpath.com. Um, and there's also information on the website at tangentpath.com. 
And if you're listening to this, and maybe Saturday doesn't work, but other stuff that I've said, um, and really, I deal a lot with relationship stuff. So if you're listening to Andrea's because of relationship things, and I'm great for having that conversation too, then go to the website and peel away the free stuff there and then get in touch with me that way. Um, these are ongoing workshops or ongoing workshops and the ongoing um, eight week Soul Sisters programs are, they're not gonna stop. But it's, yeah, which I've been part of twice now and they're awesome. Yeah. So great, as Jill said, great sense of community and connection with women and a real safe space to you know, download some stuff that maybe you've been packing around that are limiting you in some of your relationships, even with yourself. Mm -hmm. So highly recommend getting that last spot on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. I'm so excited. <laughs> and, um, you know, the one in the future for the eight-week program or anything else that Jill does, you can find her at tangentpath.com. Thanks for popping in, lady. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. We're not wearing our hats tonight. So. I know. We don't have any stuff on our heads. No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> the night is young. Yes. yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you so talking funny. about? I'm talking about honesty to start off with. I've gotten some great, great questions tonight. Um, I had a gentleman send in three hard-hitting questions, so I think that's probably going to take up my half hour of time. But one was honesty, and it floors me that I need to even bring this up, but how many people online are actually dishonest? We touched on this a little bit last week with Tinder and online dating, um, but really it makes no sense to me because um, you, know, you can create this persona or you can catfish someone online, but if the intention is to find love or create a meaningful relationship with someone, you don't want to start off with lies and deception it will go nowhere yeah so i'm very sad to say but uh sort of the cliche of online dating is that women are lying about their age mm -hmm. and men are lying about their height i'm leaving you with this yes thank you thanks for coming in <laughs> yay ciao everybody saturday <laughs> So um, I'll delve a little deeper into that. Um, you know, I, I can understand where the the desire to maybe you know extend the truth or have a little bit of a white lie surrounding um, you know who you are. But really, being successful in dating and in long term relationships comes from owning and loving who you are. So when you start uh, stretching the truth, um, you're sort of leading a path to destruction down the line because relationships need to be based on trust. So ladies and gentlemen, when you are posting your pictures or having conversations, um, you are legitimately um, representing yourself. You don't want photos from years ago. Best is have photos within the last year, ideally six months. Um, showing uh, how you live your life and are enjoying the things that you do in life. Um, if you are packing around a little extra weight and it's something that you're not necessarily proud of, but it's yours and you got to own it because if you end up eating for a coffee, you know, pre-meet, pre-date, you're not going to get past your tea before the person um, already has pass the judgment of dishonesty on you. So really important that um, you're representing yourself properly online. Um, one of my guests that had a specific question about honesty is his experience has been, why are some women never honest about if they are interested still or not? even when you follow up with them or ask them, I wish women were more honest. Well, I think that probably flies both ways and definitely as Canadians, but um, even West Coasters, we tend to be polite to a fault. So instead of being honest and telling people directly that um, it's not anything personal, it's just a matter of uh, you know connection with another person or chemistry, if you will, if that person isn't floating your boat, you need to let them know, and you can do it in a really kind way. And early is best. You don't want to lead someone on. If you are finding that you're having difficulty in having that conversation, you maybe need to revisit yourself a little. Are you hanging on to those people from a place of ego, and you're wanting that additional attention until something better comes along? 
that is entirely unfair and will not serve you well in the long run and it most certainly will not help them because they're putting their emotional investment in a place that doesn't exist. So I think it's always best after the first date to have a touch base, to either reaffirm that you had a great time and you'd like to see that person again um, by discussing when that will happen and what a second date will look like that creates excitement and makes each individual feel really comfortable where they are and kind of wipes the slate of any insecurities, which can create lots of problems in the early days of dating. Or you're being really frank and saying, you know, it was such a pleasure meeting you and I enjoyed our time together, but I just feeling that it wasn't a really good fit for me and I wish you all the best in, you know, your dating endeavors or whatever language you want to use that suits best as long as it's kind and direct. So whoever these ladies are that this gentleman's been dating, uh, fess up, girls. Uh, you're wasting his time and really inevitably yours as well by stringing someone along that you just don't want to put that investment into. So let's just cut out that crappy behavior, shall we? I'm going to dig into the next question here. I find women are usually interested at first and then things die down by the second or third date. There are great conversations through text between dates. Why might this be happening? Uh, well, there's a couple of little clues within that question. So uh, usually interested at first, sure, that's the exciting part. If you're looking through either Tinder, online dating, or event in person, obviously there was a mutual attraction, which is usually based in physicality, unless you've spent a little time talking to each other. But then if you're going into the second or third dates and you're only communicating by text, so much can be lost in text conversations. I've said it before and I'll say it again. A uh, phone call or in person is always the best way to start and even continue uh, the development of a relationship or connection with another person. So much things can get lost in text, tone, humor, uh, I mean, grammar, hello, autocorrect. Um, we're moving so quickly these days, we're firing things off and not putting enough thought and intention on what it is that we're sending to the another individual. Emoticons will only go so far. So if you've met someone and uh, you are excited by them and you want to spend more time with them, then you're initiating, as I just mentioned earlier, a time to reconnect. Uh, you can use text to do sweet little things like sending a hi in the middle of the afternoon or I'm thinking about you or I'm excited about the next time we see each other. But date planning and conversation, which is going to help embolden the emotional connection with this new person in your life, needs to happen by phone um, and in person. So text might be why you're having some of those problems with losing that special feeling in between dates two and three from your initial conversation with that person and the time that you spent on your first date. And I just want to make sure that I'm answering all of your question there. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it comes down to it you need to keep the fire alive and create some excitement uh, another little thing you want to maybe cue into is that you're not oversharing on date one or interrogating so it's your time to sort of spend a little time together get to know the ins and outs a little bit of who you are what you enjoy family background friends social structure things that you enjoy doing and finding some commonalities so that you can connect and have a more impassioned conversation about the things that matter to you and to them. Um, talking about your exes or past relationships or getting maybe a little too deep or saying, I'm on a path to get married and have babies and anything that's just a little too intense should be off the table in the first date. Um, also that, uh, you know, you're not going out and uh, drinking too much, or becoming inebriated and maybe showing a side of yourself that maybe isn't quite so attractive because you're dealing with nerves. Uh, you just want to go in as your confident self and connect on just a really real, genuine base level. So I think that's the best way to handle um, fostering a relationship between date one, two, and three. 
I'm going to slide into question number three right away here. These are some great questions. Um, what are some types of dates that a guy could set up where you really get to know each other? I had set up a dinner once and it was terrible. Uh, it was super loud, we were far apart, and it ruined the date. Well, I'll tell you, with even me setting up the dinners, I do host them at restaurants around town, and I do my homework. I go and I check out the venue, um, I speak to the staff, and I'm strategic about where I'm putting my guests so that it's not too loud, um, that there is an environment of intimacy so people feel um, comfortable in connecting and they still have the energy of the restaurant around them but they're in a space where they can hear each other and get up and socialize a little bit so I think anytime that you're planning a date it shouldn't be last minute or off the cuff if you're making an investment in time in your romantic life you need to make it a priority much like you would a job search or anything else that's really important for you in your life so if you're going on a first date and you've met this person you really want to make an impression the whole wooing or courtship side of things do a little homework uh, while you're planning the date if you had an initial conversation with that person and you connected on a certain thing whether that be I don't know doing the grouse grind hiking paddle boarding passionate about uh, beach volleyball or film or your total foodies and you uh, clicked on a particular restaurant that both of you enjoy, use that sort of level of thought when planning your dinners. Um, again, to refer back to the dinners that I do when I follow up with guests the next day to see if anyone was interested in seeing each other again, um, I then connect them if there's a mutual attraction and I give a little life coaching to the guys. I am a little traditional in um, my values in the sense that I put it the ball in the men's court with regards to initiating and, and creating a little sense of courtship and chase, uh, which is biologically built in you, whether you know that or not yet. And uh, women certainly appreciate the attention. So I ask what it is that the two of you connected over your initial meeting and then give some gentle coaching as to what you should plan next. So going to a restaurant where it's super noisy and you're sitting far apart is not a great place to start. If you met someone off the get-go and there's a real like fire in the chemistry, you want to sit somewhere where you can actually sit on the bench beside them and be in close proximity. Uh, sitting side by side as opposed to face to face is a much more intimate environment to be in. Uh, it allows you to throw uh, body cues to them, if you will, um, you know, a touch on the back or touching the knee or the leg and being able to good, get a good read back from them as to how they're feeling on the date. Um, so there's some absolutely fantastic establishments I know in Vancouver, but I've traveled abroad as well. If you do a little research, you can find those places. See if they're having live music on a certain night, um, but you can have a little quiet corner so you still have that ambiance. Maybe you start off the date by meeting and going for a lovely walk, either pre or post date, to continue the conversation and um, build on what you have throughout the date. Um, little cues. And how about date hopping? Going to a little place and having a light snack and then taking them to another establishment to maybe have another meal or go do something that's activity based and then winding up the evening by you know grabbing a little gelato and going for a stroll outside. So you really want to be more imaginative and inventive and think strategically about where you're taking someone so that it's providing an environment where you can connect a little deeper and have the opportunity to get to know each other a little better. So. Um, I'm just going to take a quick peek and see if I've missed anything at all with regards to people tweeting. Again, if you're watching live and want me to answer any of your questions, you can tweet to at join the DP or if you are already a fan, which I hope you are, of our Facebook page, it's the Dinner Party Vancouver and you can post comments there under the live link. So give me two shakes, excuse me, while I take a look down. I haven't had anything else come in yet. 
maybe I'll take this opportunity to let you guys know about some of the exciting things that are happening with the dinner party. I am bringing love to the table this July to the Okanagan Valley. So if you are uh, in the Okanagan Valley and want to experience the dinner party, um, again, for any of you that are not familiar with what I do, I host dinner events at great establishments where I bring together a group of 8 to 12 people, equal number men and women, and give you the opportunity to sit down and connect with others that I have curated a table based on me spending some time with you and finding out a little bit about your background, your values, lifestyle, things that you're passionate about, and then what you're looking for in a relationship. And then based on that information, I'm bringing people to the table that share those similarities, um, therefore creating a better opportunity to connect and finding someone that's on the same path as, as you with their relationship needs. So you get to spend two, and to be honest, a lot of the dinners go three, four hours long because everyone has such a good time. It's a multi-course meal. Um, men move around the table just a little bit um, in between sort of the appetizer and the end course so everyone has the opportunity to connect and talk. No asking anyone out at the table. You just have to show up, uh, be ready to be engaged and be yourself. The dinners are fantastic for the sense that you really can't be anything but yourself as opposed to on one-on-one -on -one dates you tend to be more wrapped up in your head and concerned about presenting something that you think the other person wants as opposed to who you really are. And at the dinners, you just can't do that. There's so much going on. There's group conversations. There's debates. Uh, there's a little one-on-one -on -one time if you're wanting to talk to one person specifically. That happens too. But it's really a joint event, and it's always so fun to see what comes out of the dinners. So series of dinners at the Okanagan for the month of July. I have a dinner coming up uh, this June in Vancouver. Um, if you're interested, don't hesitate in reaching out at info at jointhedinnerparty.com. And then I have a fabulous, my first, I'm so excited, my dating wellness workshop. My first of many is being launched this June 28th. It's being held and hosted live in Vancouver. It's all uh, specifically, sorry guys, this one is for women. It's focusing on releasing any bad dating beliefs or behaviors and reclaiming the things within you that will create a better and more authentic dating life. So uh, it's a fun workshop. Actually, Jill that was here earlier in the show is involved. She'll be leading some of the meditations. Uh, and we're doing a lot of discovery and unearthing through uh, meditation, artwork, and discussion. So you can find out more about that on the Facebook page. Uh, there are some tickets still left uh, through Eventbrite. But if you have any questions, again, you can reach out through info at jointhedinnerparty.com. So let's touch on um, how to create a first date or how to even get to a first date and then create a great first date. So uh, I've been fascinated by even some of the stuff that I get online. I myself am single and I am back in the game of doing a little online dating. Not only is that important for me and my own uh, relationship status, but also finding out what's going on out there in the online dating world in order to better help my clients. Um, and then I promote the dinner party through Tinder as well. And I'm always fascinated about the things that come up through there and how some people engage. Predominantly, um, I'm working with men through Tinder. However, there are some women as well that are on there to just uh, extend their social network. So um, I've met some great gals through there too. There's some fantastic people on Tinder. Um, just to reiterate a little bit about what I talked about last week. The best thing to do on Tinder to be successful is uh, number one, have fantastic photos. So really use um, almost a little self-judgmental judgment, eye when you're putting your pictures or choosing the pictures that you use off of Facebook for Tinder. You want a fantastic headshot with a great smile. Um, you want to look uh, approachable and engaging and someone that you would want to spend time with. And then you can have a social shot. 
and then some shots of you doing what it is that you love so people get a better grasp on who you are just from the pictures because we know it moves quickly on there swiping left and right and then the profile you've got a little bit of space but be really clear about who you are some little details yes guys it is important to us gals how tall you are so your height um, what your interests are and then really specific about what you're looking for relationship dating uh, hookup polyamorous open relationship BDSM just be upfront about it we tie this back to the whole honesty thing if you are not being upfront about what it is that you're asking for are engaging someone and then sort of bamboozling them after not a cool way to operate. It is a small world and karma's a bitch, so please make sure that you're being upfront and honest. It'll be way more successful that way. Um, and if you're wanting a relationship, but your online profile is sounding, I don't know, maybe a little bit more sexual in nature, you're gonna have great girls that are just gonna swipe on by you or not click and engage on your online profile if you're not being like the sweet great guy that you are or woman for that matter too so make sure that your pictures and your online um, profile are aligned with who you are and what you want um, very very clearly um, engaging people and getting to a first date um, I think uh, humor is a great way to go um, tying in what you've learned from their profile and using it as a means to engage and get someone's attention. There are hundreds of people out there online and on Tinder and, and I mean, Meetup, uh, what have you. I mean, even people are using Facebook and LinkedIn, if you can believe it, to connect with others romantically. Uh, anything online seems to go right now, but you better be interesting in your approach. Um, and the best way to do that is to be curious and make the other person feel special by being genuinely flattering. Uh, coming out with, hey, sexy and yum, uh, which is what I got the other day, it, no, it's a non-starter. So you want to be more articulate. Intelligence is very sexy for both men and women. And definitely a sense of humor is a great way to get someone's attention. And then connecting emotionally, um, sharing a little bit about yourself and being curious about the other person is what's going to get you eventually to a phone call. So a couple of messages back and forward, get them on the phone right away, see if tone, timing, sense of humor, all of that comes into play to make you decide that you wanna see that person. And then within a week's time, None of this three week email pen pal stuff going on. You want to ask that person out to meet for a pre date. It's going for coffee. Going for coffee, excuse me, it's not a date. That's like a pre date. You two are just meeting each other to see if you click and have that chemistry happening in person. And chemistry can build you guys. So if you're curious about this person and they intrigue you, but they may not aesthetically fit the picture that you have, definitely give it the time to see what evolves out of it. Time is a beautiful thing when it comes to dating. And then set a date by phone, not by text. Pick up the phone and call someone or if you're feeling really brazen and things are going exceptionally well in your pre-date, then ask that person then. There's no better way to make someone feel really special and understand where they stand within the relationship. And uh, date, as I mentioned earlier, do a little research, ask some questions, because this is your opportunity to really make an impression on someone and set the tone for dates to come. So for my uh, person that sent in questions earlier, really you wanna blow their socks off on the first date and maintain that level of connection to be successful for two, three, four dates to come up in the future. So I'm going to wrap things up there, short and sweet, uh, tonight. Again, if you have any questions and you want to queue them up for next Thursday, uh, you can email me at info at jointhedinnerparty.com or tweet at me live during the event at jointhedp and uh, become a fan at Facebook. Um, the link is on my YouTube channel. You can find all the juicy details you need to about the dinner party there. Uh, the site is jointhedinnerparty.com, 
And please don't hesitate in reaching out to me at any time. I'm here to help spread the love and support people in your dating lives. So reach out anytime and I will definitely get back to you in any way that I can to help support you. So have a fantastic Thursday night. Date well this weekend. It's going to be smoking hot on the West Coast. So get out there and enjoy. Do drive-by highs and eye contact and lots of smiles to help engage people out on the street. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Thanks for just asking. Bye.